anyway, we have the the uh, tape sealing the entire uh, each side of the foam. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to install the scrap wood on the sides of the joists. After that, I'm going to show you how to cut foam. Let's get to it. Make sure not to step on the foam while you're working on any other part of the floor, especially when you're installing the plywood sheathing on top. At that point, then you're good. But for now, just stay away from the centers between these joists. Anyway, talking about the scrap wood. Well, like I said before, all you need to do is you need to take screws, take the spacer to space that wood, and then screw it on. So my dad was telling me that you don't necessarily have to screw the spacer in. You can hold it in with your hand if you have a big enough hand and a lot of strength. I might try that first to see how it works. But all you have to do is take screws. All right, so we have the screws. Now I'll take the screws. And first we're going to install the ones on these sides. It doesn't really matter what order you install them in. Actually, I'm just going to install it here. You want to make sure that they're evenly spaced. I'd say right here is fine. First, I'm going to install the screws. We already have some holes pre-drilled for the video. You want to be careful that it spins, especially with this wood like this. So in order to prevent it from spinning, all you have to do is just hold the wood down while you're drilling it. At this point, what you want to do is you want to take the wood Make sure that the screws are facing outward. Find your place where you want to put it. Space it. Make sure it's spaced on both sides of the wood. So you want to push up while the spacer is there. Okay? And what I was saying before is if you have large enough hands, you can push down this spacer while also holding up this, uh, this scrap wood while you're drilling. So let's try it. a bit. There we go. So you can see while I was drilling that in that the spacer is moving a bit and the scrap wood is also moving a bit. So that's why you need a lot of strength in order to make sure that you can do it this way. So, as always, when you're screwing two screws into something, you always want to make sure that the first screw you screw in is not too tight, so that the second one allows you to adjust it. I mean, so that allows you to adjust the other side of the wood. So in that case, I need to make sure it's that the screw I screwed in first is not too tight. So I just loosened it. This way we can make sure that it's flush. Now, you want to hold down the spacer while pulling this up. Using our spacer, if this is flush. And basically, what we're looking for is making sure that it stays the same level the entire way. And we should hear it rubbing against the spacer while we're moving it. And as you can see, it is flush with the. It is, it is flush with the joists, but offset by the uh, width of the foam. So that's how we install all of our spacers. So we've got the first one down. That's how we install all of our scrap wood. We wanted to get the first one down. Now we have to do the rest of the six. So like I was saying earlier, this seems like a lot of scrap wood for just supporting foam. So maybe six is overkill, but you know, for the purposes of the video, we're going to go for six all around. Yeah, so my dad was explaining that the reason that he installed so much wood and that he used really good wood for it it's because we actually want to make sure that we could stand on the foam. That someone of my weight, at least, could stand on the foam. And I, I guess I said earlier that the purpose of this entire process was to avoid having to support any of the weight using the foam. But I'll show you right now. 
that the phone can't support me because we used six pieces of wood all around the, uh, the sides of the joists. If we didn't use six pieces of wood or we didn't use as thick of wood, then it wouldn't be able to support us. But even, even supported by dad, who is like 50 pounds more heavier than me. So if you want to make your phone able to support your weight, then you can always go for the all six. You can, you can go for as many scrap wood as you want. So let me finish this off camera. And we'll, after we get back, I'm gonna show you how to cut the insulation. All right, so as you see, I have all six of them installed. Probably later we're gonna do four. Like I said, this one's just to make sure that we can stand on it. But now, we're going to cut the foam. So actually, this is not the original width of the foam. I believe it's much more that width. Um, I don't know how to do a size comparison of these two, but what I do know is that we did cut a bit of, um, a bit off of this, uh, of this sheet, which is this part right here. So unfortunately, I will not be able to show you how to cut the whole length, but all you need to do that is you need to use a pencil. You want to mark the distance from the edge that you want to do it. You want to mark a few dots. Then you want to connect those dots with a line using a straight edge. And then you want to use a steady hand and a few uh, scores to, uh, to trace out what you want to cut out. And then after you cut it out, you, you want to do it on both sides. You want to do it on this side and you want to do it on the bottom side. Then you're going to use your hand to separate the two. But anyway, now what we're going to do is because we all have the same thickness or the same width, not the same thickness, the same width of the uh, sheets as the holes that we want to fill, now we're going to figure out the exact um, uh, depth that we want these sheets to be. What I mean by this is in order to fill this hole, we need to measure this length right here, which is about 14 and a half. Over here, we're going to measure 14 and a half inches from the edge. And I think, I believe my dad already traced out the um, lines that we need for them. 14 and a half. And like I said, what you want to do for this is you want to put a few marks where you want 14 and a half to be. You want to do at least four or five marks. And then you want to connect them with a straight edge. The next step is to take a knife and score. First you want to score that line. And then you want to go back and trace over that score with a knife. Make sure that when you're cutting with a knife, you never cut towards yourself. You cut away from yourself. And then when you have that line down, then you want to go back over it and fully cut it out. After that, you want to repeat the process on the other side. And then you're going to be able to cut out enough material in order for you to snap it away. So that's what I'm going to do here. I think see where to have the line traced out. This is a very sharp knife, so I have to be careful with it. This is good enough for me right now. I don't know how deep my dad went, but... I want to trace out that line. You want to be very careful with this because I guess I, you, you want to be careful with this because these are very expensive. So any mistakes that you make are also going to be very expensive. And after you do it on this side, you want to turn it around and do it on the opposite side, which it looks like my dad already did, but I'm just going to go over it one more time. After that, you want to snap it, and the way I like to do it is you want to sort of like jiggle it around from both sides, and then eventually it's going to tear off. So, like I said, 
on both sides, you just wanna sort of push it and pull it backwards. It's kind of an awkward angle for me right now, but you wanna push it and then eventually, as you do that across the entire length, it's gonna snap off, but I can't do it. So there we have it. Here's the sheet of foam that we need. And let's see if it fits in that hole that we want. Let me make sure it's the same orientation as... Wait a second. <laughs> uh, okay, so it looks like we put that in the wrong order. But it looks like... It looks like the, the length is just right. Maybe if we need to, we need to shave off a tiny bit of the edge. The width also looks right. So actually before this, my dad also cut out a bit of the side in order to account for the uh, joist hangers. So we're gonna make sure that these are on the right side. And then we're just going to ins in install them. So like I said, one side first, slide it in. Then you want to bend the other side into its crevice, into its hole. And then you want to push in the middle, push in the sides. And now, as you can see, we have the foam inserting. Next up, if you want to use caulk, then use caulk. But now we're going to put eBay tape. All right, so that was pretty much all we need to talk about in this video. Like I said, all you need to do is you need to put the, the, the shelves, the wooden scrap shelves. Then you need to trace out the wood, uh, the foam that you need to cut out. Use safe knife handling tools in order to cut out that foam. Make sure that when you're done with it, you pull out, you pull back the blade. I, I think I did that when I was done with it. Make sure you put it in a safe spot. Oh, by the way, if you want to buy the blade, we bought this from Amazon. We'll link it in the description down below. This is what the packaging looks like. I'm not sure if that's important. After you cut out the wood, then you want to in install it. Make sure you follow the guidelines. I said you, you want to slide it in, then push it in on the other side. Then you want to put caulk, and then you want to put uh, tape to finally seal up what you just installed. If you also want to buy the phone that we use, we got it from Home Depot. But we got we ordered it back when prices weren't high. And we when we ordered it, each sheet was around $30. So now the pan, that now that the pandemic has caused everything to increase, it's probably going to be more than $30. But if you want to, these 2 inch thick sheets from uh, of foam insulation from Home Depot were about $30 per sheet if you want to go and see. Anyway, I my month and today I showed you how to uh, install foam insulation for your uh, your uh, your suspended floor or your deck. And like I said, this might not be as useful if you're making an outdoor deck because outdoor decks don't use insulation. But if you're making something that requires an enclosed deck like a shed in Canada or any other cold place that needs heated floors, then this would be a helpful video for you. And I hope you took a lot away from it. And if you have any questions, please put them in the, uh, the comments down below. And if you have anything to start a discussion about, also feel free to put them in the comment section down below. But anyway, I'm Ayman, and thanks for watching. In the next video, we're going to be installing the plywood sheathing. Now, when you're installing plywood sheathing, and you also want to put foam insulation under it, I do recommend that you, you, cut, out, you, you cut out the... Uh, the, the um, plywood sheathing first. Like in our example, we have to cut out the sheathing so that we can make room for that post. Make sure you do all of that before you install the foam because plywood is really heavy and you don't want to be walking on the foam or making a mistake and stepping on the foam while you're trying to cut it out after. So make sure you trace out the sheathing beforehand, which we'll do in the next video. And I'm Ayman and I'll see you next time. So signing out.
Why is this the hard part? I can't see anything except Alba. 